Last week or the week before that or before that we left Galaxy City and we left you hanging with this major cliffhanger of either going to Kyoto or Corinth. Well, turns out we went to Corinth town because the winds were good and we didn't want to stop sailing. We made the right call because we did have major winds and learned how the world reacts to those kind of conditions. So in this episode we actually go through the canal the moment we've been waiting for for so long. That was so healing over. We're 10 minutes off the channel. We want to anchor there for the night. Great idea, right? Great idea with 25 round winds, gusts 30. More predictions said they're gonna die down. Yes, they will at 10. It's 5. <laughs> So five hours of storms. We're gonna get the main in and then find our anchor spot. That's the channel over there. Eventually we chose not to anchor in front of the channel but to go into the small boats harbor of Corinth, mainly due to the weather. It has mooring boys scattered like a minefield so you can basically tie up however you feel like. Switching lights. Yeah, that was a bit of a improvised mooring. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah, there's a mooring boy over there. But I wanted to get in and uh, tie up first and then get into forward here to straighten up. Maybe that was the best idea. And we threw our lines on another mooring boy just to tie up for a second and now I'm just gonna catch it. Correct delay. Nice. Off you go. We are tied up to this one. Where all of our lovely neighbors have us. And we are going to tie up to that one though. It's a bit more straight and it's easier to keep us off the pontoon in the back. My name is Alex and this is Mandy. Recently we moved aboard Blue, our 36-foot Oceanus, and we learned how to sail in the Med. We don't really know where we're gonna end up, but we do know that we want to go through the Corinth Canal. And we're almost there. It's 9.45, we are in front of the channel now, we, we are totally prepared and we rushed out of a small boat's harbor because our friends are here and they wanted to be here at 9.30 and it is 9.45. Now I think we have to focus a bit on the radio, see what's happening and then we're gonna pass through. Blue juice for a corn canal. Stand by, thank you. Nice, nice, nice. Oh. I'm excited. Blue juice from Corn Canal. This blue juice. The canal is too narrow for ships to pass each other, it's a one-way street. You must get permission to proceed so we contact Istmir Control Tower on VHF 11. This is so exciting! We're the last ones! Shortly before entering you get to know which boat you have to follow and everyone lines up to go through. Sometimes it takes up to three hours before you're allowed to go through. In case you have to wait, waiting is easy as you just throw your anchor next to the entrance. We're slowing down a bit. Looks like a tiny traffic jam on the water. The recommended speed is about 5 to 6 knots, but our group went with about 4 to 5 and we weren't told to speed up. At one point you can notice there are a lot of neatly cut holes in the walls going from the top all the way down. These were the steps used by the workers to climb into and out of the canal. The canal is about 3 nautical miles long, passing takes about 30 to 45 minutes and when you are on the other side it's time to dock and pay for the transit. We're tied up to the pier to pay, got help from Zim, oh, I got the boat license and uh, we let another boat moor up alongside. 
So, payment time. A bit stressful. We just helped another boat tie up to ours because there's not that many spaces to get on. It was a bit stressy. <laughs> Did you say that? That it was a bit stressy? Ooh, ooh, and this is hot. And the next we're off. We made it. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool ride. We brought Alex the rest of the papers because he needs that to fill out the form. And then we pay and we're good to go. Next stop is either Salamia or Aquina. We work out. That took longer than the passage. <laughs> it took really long, huh? Poor man. <laughs> How many people are still in there? Uh, two, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, just these guys and some other gun. Everybody left, huh? Yeah, everybody left. Oh, well, what are we doing then? It's just us. Frank done? Oh, he's done. Yeah, he's done too. All paid up? Yeah. How much was it? 150. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine, yeah. The boat next to us and Zin just both left because we were all waiting, we're the last ones in the office to pay and they were just threw off their lines and left and the guy started screaming up at us saying don't go, don't go, stay, stay so because the next charge, like boat is coming in and now we're the only one that stayed behind and so we're still waiting until they tell us we're allowed to leave and it might take uh, like 15 minutes because all the other boats are going through now in the other direction well planning we did. But there's wind. There is a lot of wind. It says every place is dangerous. Take care of this and that. There's too much wind there and a force seven to eight there. There are even whirlwinds. Fun. Starts in June. It gets worse in July, August and September, which is exactly the time we're here. And then dies off in October. Also it says the summer months are hot <laughs> and windy. No rain. And many of the islands run short of water. So today we have about a three or four hour trip in front of us. <laughs> we did most of it, but it is so hot because there's no wind. And it means we're motoring all the way, so it's loud. And no wind also means nothing that pulls you up from this blistering sun. So I am uh, kind of hiding in the shade of the boom. Alex is hiding in the shade of the ma. Soon we'll be in... Did you tell them already where we're going? Soon we'll be in... Oh god, Egina. It's the second island south of Athens. We will be trying to get into the harbor, which probably won't work because there is loads of day trip and weekend trip boats that come from Athens to go there because it's quite close. So we probably will be anchoring right outside the harbor, which is also fine. Actually, maybe nicer because we'll have some, some freedom. And then we'll just rest for a couple of days, I guess, because the last one and a half weeks we've been sailing a lot, almost every day, doing loads of things, and it's, uh, it's exhausting. We kind of need to gather our thoughts, get some sleep, and find out where to go next, because we planned until the Corinth, and that was our next goal, but we didn't really think about what to do after the Corinth. We arrived, the harbor's full, our friends told us, so we didn't even bother to get in. We just anchored in front of the town. Mandy's checking on the anchor. It's, it's sort of wedged behind the stove, sort of in the sand. Maybe you try revving up and I see what happens. That's it, now we're in the Aegean Sea, we need to figure out where we go next, if we go to the Cyclades with Maltemi weather or not. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a like in the comments below and subscribe to the channel. said you have to pay attention to the wake of the, all the ferries. Oh, the ferry actually made this door slam shut and then the mirror fell off and broke. You can see that we go in with dirty feet because it doesn't get clean anymore. Our neighbors started a trend and are trying to encourage other sailors to do good. We're putting up anchor balls and we thought we'd try the same. Any idea how to attach it? Yeah, can you lower the speed lift? Okay, I will do. Now you can lift it again. Look at this gorgeous sunset. Perfect ending for a day. We're starting a new trend, people. Join in, be the first, before it's too late. 
Come on guys, like, subscribe and put your anchor ball up. It doesn't look as great in camera but the sunset is actually pink. You can color grade it. Don't worry about it, we'll make it pink for you. Look how awesome. It is pink, I've never seen a pink sunset. <laughs>